he really damaged my son. Um, well, what were, was, and what were the chemicals? Because we've looked at them. They were in her notebook. You have uh, that documented. I mean, do you remember? I, I know it was hydrochloric acid, bleach, water. When you mix those, you get chlorine gas. Um, they make methyl chloride. I and, mean, this and, is how yeah. you kill people in World War II. This is deadly stuff. There were other uh, chemicals on there, too, that... Um, yeah, they're serious. I mean, you definitely wouldn't want any child, let, let alone an adult, with uh, appropriate equipment around them. So I understand why that that's very upsetting. I mean, your son got harmed in that incident. Yeah, there's no mother in the world would order these types of chemicals into their home with children. I had um, I had a little girl and a little boy in my house, and all their little friends always over at the house playing. Um, as I'm treating my son's hands and trying to grasp what's going on up on my kitchen table, uh, my wife takes off. She ends up grabbing all of the stuff out of the garage and she just leaves. Um, I could have not, I didn't realize how serious this was. I didn't know how much exposure he really had. Um, I just knew he was losing, you know, a good four layers off of every part of his hands. Um, I was soaking his hands and reading about different things, um, what to do and how to treat it. I was thinking it was more of a surface skin damage thing. I didn't um, comprehend that that he inhaled it and that it got into his bloodstream um, and, and damaged his, his little body, and it did. Um, basically, my son from this day forward has had um, nosebleeds. It, just, it damaged his blood vessels and his sinus cavities. Um, my son's digestive system just doesn't work right. He literally has the hardest time uh, using a restroom during number two. He's on the toilet for 45 to an hour, never relieving himself 100%, and his stools are so sticky. He has to wipe himself like 15, 20 times, and still it's hard to clean himself. Um, as he grows up, he goes from, you know, nine years old, 10 years old, 11 years old. Um, he started getting white dots on his teeth. His teeth weren't um, coming out properly. Um, he was getting little sores on his hands. Um, he literally had excessive release. I mean, it was some something I was kind of proud of. Sometimes we'd be out hunting and my son would be peeing 20 feet. It was just like a fire hose, but it's <laughs> not okay. It's yeah, excessive it's release. This poor little boy's liver and kidneys aren't working properly. Um, he then, once he started puberty at about um, 13, 14 years old, it started chilling. He was one of the best athletes in the school. Um, besides having nosebleeds during practices and during games, um, and always having to put a tissue in his nose, um, his athletic ability was declining. His muscles weren't um, weren't working as good. I mean, my son, he was chiseled. He had this jawline like me. He had muscles. He he was amazing. Um, he was starting to show that he would get fatigued, you know, a lot easier. And some of it just seemed to me like he was going into puberty, his body was changing, but I took him out skiing one day and um, we're skiing down the mountain and he could not ski more than a couple hundred feet without falling backward. And my son's an amazing skier. My little girl skiing circles around him and I'm helping pick him up and I, honey, what's the matter, you know, what's going on? And he just almost in tears, he says, daddy, my muscles won't hold me up. And it was just one of those moments. I'm picking him up and he was like a rag doll. I mean, even when I'd get him part way up, his muscles were cramping yeah. and fatiguing so bad he, he couldn't do it. So it took us a long time to finish this one run. Um, then I found that uh, he was being treated by a doctor by the name of, she's not even a doctor, she has a clinic in Anchorage at the uh, Alaska Regional Hospital. Um, and her name's Christine Sagan, and um, I found out that he was, she was uh, seeing my son behind my back without my knowledge. And when I talked to her, I said, hey, what's going on? You, you were seeing my son without my knowledge? She's like, what do you mean without your knowledge? Your wife told me when I asked her to do blood tests and when su suggesting some things about her concerns with him, the only thing she shared with the doctor was my son was beginning to g gain water weight at his waist, his nipples, and in his face, she didn't share the, the problems he was having with his digestive system and uh, his excessive release and his athletic ability declining and his muscles fatiguing and him getting fatigued and then the little sores on his hands. Um, and she, the doctor says to me, Mr. Cummings, uh, your wife was really rude to me. She literally said that you weren't interested in, in him seeing me and the treatments I might be suggesting and that I was too expensive. And it was like, 
no, ma'am, I never knew that my son was seeing you. So. And what was her name? And Christine Saigon. She's at she's... the Alaska Regional and runs uh, the natural medicine um, clinic there. Look like an advanced practice uh, RN nurse. Yeah, and um, you know when I found this out, all of a sudden they're running cover up on this whole thing. When I was trying to figure it out, um, literally where they had an employee who was there, who told me I couldn't get medical records on my children, um, and literally my wife was calling them all the time. Um, after she had um, done what she had done um, so it was just you know a hell summer all of a sudden yeah. I'm working 18 hour days and my son gets exposed to these chemicals my wife's trying to sabotage my company and I'm not even realizing what's going on I could have never fathomed this woman would steal three hundred thousand dollars from our family company and invest it into a pyramid pool with a bunch of dirt bags um, so Al Crowley started showing his true colors. Active interest media. Um, Aaron Kreitas, 2011. And I hear that Pulse Line is up and running. I see it on the internet. Aaron's st uh, still working for my company. I'm like, Aaron, it's not okay. I'm not okay with this. Okay, I'll pull it down. I'm sorry, Dean. Um, um, and then 2012 comes along and Aaron Kreitas comes back up and he's doing the Pulse Line Adventures um, site again. Um, this is pretty serious what happened to this poor kid. I mean, this poor kid has serious concerns about what he had done with this insurance fraud with um, South Coast Helicopters. Um, that's who, um, or with Evergreen Helicopters. And um, he um, is kind of freaking out. And Al Crowley just walks up, puts his arm around him. Look, I'll give you Dean's marketing contract in Ski and Skiing Magazine. You can... You can have all this marketing. Um, Scott, uh, John Wilger put his arm around Aaron Kreitas, one of my big clients that used to buy privates. Um, Matt Rittman, um, Rittman Financial in California, who we've now found was investing some of the money on this pyramid pool investment scheme. Um, Hans Valdezain of Europe. Um, and Tito Norris and Brad Wood, Dennis in uh, Austin, Texas. Basically, how it went was my wife was trying to give Aaron his out and trying to sabotage the company, trying to convince me to sell the company or close the doors. Um, Aaron Kreitis um, is doing great with me and, and, and seemed like I maybe would have never found this out. But my wife walks up to me one day and says, hey, I want to change his percent on sales. I want to change his percentage of what what he makes on each sell of every client. I'm like, gosh, Karen, it's only a couple months before the season. It seems ridiculous. Um, let the kid, leave him alone. Just let him finish out the sales for this season. We'll go into the heli skis and we can talk about it after the season's over. No, Dean, did you see he's got ads in Skiing Magazine and he's got full, uh, he's got the website back up, Pulse Line, and I'm livid. I'm not okay with this kid. Yeah, had a non-compete clause with you, right? Yeah, he's on a non-compete contract with me. He's making like, almost $90,000. He gets to guide at the highest level. I teach him everything I've ever known my whole life on how to guide and what to do. I mean, the kid didn't have these skills. I, I taught him these skills. He was about at the level of being a senior guide. He wasn't even quite at that level yet. He was still really young. He still needed to mature. He still needed to learn a lot more about train management and glacier travel and how to identify snowpack stability. Um, so my wife tricks me into firing him. So she's like, look, Dean, he's got all this pulse line going on. He's flying his flag in front of the H2O guide's flag. I call him up. I'm like, hey, 